A bad Supreme Court decision guarantees more chaos in counting the votes next month. I'm Steve Forbes. This is What's Ahead, where we give you the insights you need to help navigate this turbulent world. The COVID crisis has precipitated a record number of mail-in votes for this year's general election. With so many close races in various states for the presidency, not to mention hotly contested battles for the Senate and the House of Representatives, there will likely be an avalanche of lawsuits concerning the validity of hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of these mail-in ballots. Was the ballot received on time? Was the signature valid? Was the ballot solicited or delivered by an unauthorized individual? And on and on. With tens of millions of more votes being cast through the mail, rather than the traditional polling places, the need for fixed and precise rules is crucial. Unfortunately, courts in a number of states have been arbitrarily changing the rules rather than relying on legislatures to do the job. Pennsylvania is a prime example. The law there expressly states that mail-in ballots must arrive no later than 8 p.m. on Election Day. Nonetheless, the Democrat-dominated Supreme Court changed the deadline to three days after the election. For good measure, it decreed that the ballot need not have a legible postmark. The opportunity for fraud is huge. No surprise, Republicans cried foul at this brazen move. Since these elections involve federal offices, not just state ones, the U.S. Supreme Court would have been within its rights to grant a stay on what the Pennsylvania judges had done. Moreover, the high court could have used the occasion to declare that courts could not tamper with election laws in any state. Only state legislatures can do that. Unfortunately, the Supremes refused to intervene and let the Pennsylvania maneuver stand. By ducking the chance to draw the line now, the Supreme Court will likely be deluged with lawsuits on Pennsylvania-like shenanigans after November 3rd. Litigation will be bad enough without fights on what exactly the rules should have been. But over 500,000 ballots were declared invalid in this year's primaries. Because of the fight over the validity of thousands of mail-ins, primary results, for example, in two New York congressional primaries, were not known for several weeks. One can only shudder at the scale of similar legal fights on a national scale. I'm Steve Forbes. This is What's Ahead. Thank you for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again.